welcome to the lecture on molding machines. So, in this lecture we are going to discuss about the different types of molding machines in case of machine molding and also while dealing with hand molding we will see that what are the different machines which are used. Now, why molding machines are important? What is the advantage of machine molding? So, we have seen that initially when there were not very much the use of the automated machines, then the lifting or transportation all this work or all the that mixing these work were carried out manually by the workers. They involved large amount of time and also the skill limitation is there. So, you need to have skillful workers and that is why the repetition of the quality cannot be assured every time that may vary. So, this when there was requirement of mass production of units in those that basically led to the advent of or the use of many kind of machines which are invented for doing the specific work. So, the advantage of using these machines are that they save a lot of time. The work which was to be done manually and it took hours on machine molding using machines it can be done within few minutes. So, a large amount of time was saved and that basically leads to increase in the productivity of the organization. For mass production, so in case of mass production the requirement cannot be met if the job is done manually. So, manually you have the limitation of the capacity of person to work. So, for mass production this machine molding has to be used molding machines are to be used. Then what we discussed is casting obtained uniform in size. So, basically when you are using the machines you can assure yourself that every time the casting which you are getting it will have the similar dimension it will have the same finish. So, for repetitive type of product or for mass production you will have to rely upon the molding machines and that will ensure that the quality of the product the appearance of the product or the metallurgical abilities of the product all that will be always uniform and same. The next advantage is that even semi skilled workers can do. So, in case of manual work wherever skill is required you need a very skillful labor when you go for hand molding. While in this case a person must know how to operate the machine and that level of skill is not required. He must know how to control the parameters by using the machine. So, inputs are there he must be a worker even if he is semi skilled he can do work he can give the output of a skilled labor. So, because here most of the work is done by the machines. So, these are the advantages of molding machines. Now, molding machines are either hand operated or power operated molding machines. Hand operated means now these both are the machines where main work is done by the machine. There will be a platform on that the box is to be put in the ramming purpose is solved ramming is to be carried out, but one is hand operated where basically ejection or you want to squeeze or you want to draw these work is done 
by manual ways. So, there are operators. So, they will keep the table on the platform or molding box on the platform and the ramming which is to be done there may be a lever it has to be either drawn up and down or there will be some lever at the bottom pressed so that you have either to do the ramming purpose. So, you, there may be many type of performances or work that is pattern draw type or pattern draw and squeeze type of mechanism may be there. So, you can draw it or draw and squeeze type is there. So, that you can handle the removal of the boxes removal of the patterns and these are under the hand operated molding machines. Then you have power operated molding machines. Now, in this case the operation is not done by manually there is machine and even those things are done by certain means like there is hydraulic or pneumatic action is to is performed. So, they are the power source and the fatigue which is created to the operator in using these levers in pattern draw and squeeze type or so that is basically missing in this case. So, that you are getting rid of that fatigue to the workers and that increases the productivity of the worker. So, what you see here is they make use of hydraulic and pneumatic action to perform various operations during molding process such as raising or lowering table for pattern withdrawal. So, for pattern withdrawal they are raising or lowering there will be a button by which the due to pneumatic force or hydraulic force the pattern may be withdrawn. Ramming the sand by jolt squeeze or combined jolt and squeeze action. So, there are different type of actions by which you do the ramming and that is also automated. So, you have to use a button by this automatically you can go for the ramming of the sand. So, there is no fatigue to workers and you have pneumatic jolt rollover molding machines. So, basically what you see is you have some base some way to reduce the fatigue to the workers and this way these power operated molding machines although they are costly then the hand operated molding machine. So, when you have to deal with a very large production or very high mass production volume in those cases these are justified because in that particular long run of production units the high cost of the machine purchased can be justified for a small number of units it is not justified because the anyway its refraction will be on the cost of the unit product. So, this way you can use either the hand operated or power operated molding machines. Now, we will discuss about different types of sand ramming methods in machine molding. So, among them you have three four methods squeezing jolting jolt and squeeze combined and slinging. Now, in the case of squeezing as the name indicates there is a pressure board. So, you are basically keeping the molding sand in the flask and then it is squeezed against a pressure board continuously. So, what happens when you have a flask which is filled with sand and suppose you have this is the pattern and you are having the sand filled and in that case you are pressing it from the top using a pressure board and this 
portion is rammed. So, the density increases in that zone around the pattern. The drawback of this method is that the density or the compactness is maximum here and it is minimum in this region. So, near the parting plane there is minimum compactness around the pattern in the bottom side. So, basically it is in this direction decreasing. So, compactness decreases in as we move from top to bottom because we have the squeeze action at this point. So, this portion will be having maximum pressure and that because of that this portion has maximum compactness and it decreases as we go down. So, this is the squeezing type of action for sand ramming and you have squeezing machines where this work is performed. Next is jolting. Now, in the case of jolting what it is done is the flask which is having filled with the sand and you have a pattern. Now, the same thing is there. Now, in that this is basically raised and lowered and it is dropped with impact on that platform. So, basically there is a jolting action the whole assembly gets a jolted action it feels under impact force and as this process is carried out many number of times the sand which is there loose initially this sand gets compacted. In the case of jolting contrary to a squeezing action the compactness is maximum at the bottom. So, here it is maximum and here it is minimum because the jolting is done the impact force maximum is applied here and because of that the grains which are in this locality near the bottom plane around the pattern they are basically getting compressed more and more whereas in the top portion the compaction degree is less. So, in this case you have minimum of compactness in this region and maximum of compactness near the parting plane. What we see is in squeezing you have maximum here, minimum here, in jolting you have minimum here and maximum here and both have the drawbacks. So, these drawbacks can be removed by taking the action of jolt and squeeze. Jolt and squeeze basically combines these two actions. So, first of all it will be jolted and then from the top using pressure board it is squeezed at sufficient pressure. So, during the jolting the lower portion in the bottom portion around the pattern and the parting plane that portion was completely compacted and during the squeeze portion the upper half portion is quite compacted and you see a required amount of compactness throughout the molding flask height. So, this way the combined action of jolting and squeezing gives you uniform compactness all along the height of the molding box or flask. Then 
another method is slinging. So, slinging there are sand slingers and sand slingers what they do in that basically you have a slinging head. So, that basically throws the molding sand at a very high velocity it is thrown around the pattern at such a high velocity with a pr large pressure that when it goes it creates a good compactness and in one go itself you get a compacted mold. So, normally slinging is preferred sand slingers are preferred when you have a large sized pattern. So, around that you use the sand slingers. So, these are the four methods which are used in machine molding for the sand ramming. Core baking machines. Now, this is about the mold. Similarly, when we make cores, cores are also prepared using the machines. Now, in that also because we will discuss later that cores in the case of cores basically we do not use the clay binders we use the organic binders because the clay content reduces the refractiveness value of the core. So, in the case of core what you need is you need a proper strength of the core, core has to be quite stubborn because it is in contact from all the sides to the heated molten metal. It must have proper permeability, collapsibility, friability, strength. So, for that for getting so core making is a separate section in the foundry. So, you have core boxes you make the cores and then you have to bake it. So, in the core making also you use the machines so that you can make the cores at a faster rate and you can make the cores of accurate dimension so that it will have the accurate inner dimension of in the casting. So, the cores are also prepared using the jolt machine. In that case a jolt table is used in ramming many core boxes. So, basically a dump type of core box is used in that case and you use the jolt table and using the jolting action the ramming of that sand in the boxes is carried out. Next is the cell core machine. So, in this case as it is written principle of cell molding is used. So, we will discuss about cell molding later where in that case the organic binders are used and the sand when reacts with the organic binder and comes in contact with a heated metallic pattern or heated metallic sheet the sand mixed with binder at that particular temperature sets and it gives you certain thickness. So, the same concept here is used you have a metallic sheet or metallic frame in that you have sand and the binder and then it is heated and you have the outside geometry of that particular core is formed inside may be hollow. So, this way you have sufficient strength of core is formed and once you have the sufficient strength of the core then you take it out. So, basically based upon the principle of cell molding this cell core machine works where you have some facility for increase of temperature giving the sand in the box giving the binder raising the temperature for certain time so that a sufficient thickness is achieved and this is used as the core box. So, that is why it is known as cell core machine. 
Then another machine which is used for making the cores is sand thrower or slinger. So, just like we have studied about sand slingers, this is for large sized core boxes. So, smaller size core boxes can be made using this cell core machine or even the jolt machine where the jolting action is carried out for a smaller or medium sized, but when there is a very large sized core box, then basically these are not economical ways because in this case you need a larger platform that is again uneconomical to be produced because you need a very large platform large machine. So, that will require a large amount of investment for that machine to be purchased. So, in those cases these sand slingers are used. So, as we have discussed in that case the sand mix the molding sand with binders they are thrown at a particular position in such a way that it is basically compacted and you get the core in one go itself. So, just based on the concept of these sand slingers you have a slinger which is available for core making also. Then you have a core blower, this core blower is used for rapid production of a small and medium sized cores. So, in that case what is done is core box is simultaneously filled with sand and rammed by a sand carrying air stream. So, basically blowing is carried out you have the core box filled with sand and at that time simultaneously a air stream with high velocity will be carrying that sand. So, that it will go and settle and it will be compacted and after some time it is set then the core is taken out. So, these are the four ways which are normally used for making the cores in a core making unit. Now, we will deal with certain tools which are used in case of hand molding. So, as we had discussed when we have to think about the mass production we go for the instruments by which we can produce large number of units with lesser amount of fatigue to the workers, but for smaller foundries who deal with a small number of units or small size products of not very large batch sizes. So, for them you have to manage the show with the persons who are working there. So, in that we I hope that people must have been conversant with different types of tools which are used for molding and that is done by hand. Among those tools there are trowels. So, trowel is a tool which is used for basically repairing the mold. It has basically a wooden handle and a steel blade or iron blade and it is used for taking the sand filling somewhere repairing. So, all this work is done using trowels. Heart and square tool. So, basically this tool it has one end as in the form of heart and another end in the form of a square. So, this tool is also used to repair the sand take the sand from one place to other doing the repair work on the sand. Then you have rammers you have different types of rammers once you pour the sand into the box you have to ram it. This ramming is carried out because you need proper amount of compactness. So, when you doing are doing by hand the ramming 
might have to be done at different locations. You may think of doing the ramming, so suppose this is a box, you may have to do at the bulk areas and sometimes in the corner areas or maybe at some localized areas when your pattern is placed in such a manner that you have to go on the corners. So, you have different types of rammers like flat rammer, pin rammer. So, flat rammers are there who basically do the ramming at horizontal portions which give the uniform pressure and do the bulk ramming. Whereas, in the localized area or around the pattern or at some constricted places when you have to do the ramming then you go for pin ramming. So, by which you can do the ramming by hand and ensure that proper ramming takes place. You have cleaners and lifters. So, basically during ramming or during the pattern withdrawal there may be sand particles which may fall inside the cavity. There may be certain dirt or certain foreign elements. So, you will have to clean them. You may have to take the suppose loose sand particle or loose lumps which are or, or some lump lumpy particles which are there inside the cavity you have to lift them. So, for that you have cleaners and lifters. Vent wire, now vent wire it is a wire whose one end is pointed another end is having the wooden handle. So, this vent wire is used to create the vent at the mold surface. So, if you have a mold you provide this venting. So, you provide you make large number of holes on that surface. So, that when you get give the liquid metal inside it and when the gases escape through these vent, vent holes the gases can escape. So, basically for providing permeability you will have to use in those cases you use these vent wires they ensure that you have proper permeability in the mold. It may so happen that while ramming by hand you may have uneven type of ramming or in fact you may have large degree of ramming. Large degree of ramming decreases the permeability. So, venting has to be there adequately so that the gases which are generated they are to go out and they can go out through these vents. Although large ramming will be deleterious because the gases which are generated inside the molding material because of its heating when it comes in contact with the molten metal and that heat passes through it and if the moisture is I mean evaporated in that case the higher compactness value of this rammed portion will certainly cause a problem in allowing the gases to escape through it. But then if the venting is proper the gases which are generated and if they are coming in contact with these vented positions then through that place these gases can escape and the undesirable effect of the gases which are generated can be avoided. Then you have a slick, slick is also a tool, swab, swab is there used as a brush which is used to clean, draw spike, draw spike is used to remove the pattern from the mold. So, if this is pattern there is a draw spike which is a pointed end from one end, so draw spike will go and it will hit the pattern and it will take the pattern out of the mold. 
So, draw spike is used, riddle is there to basically do the riddle work to see the sand so that you can get the sand of uniform grain I mean size and you can use this. So, these are the tools which are used in case of hand molding. Thank you.